2020 and 2021 have been and will be big years for Mars exploration. Three different missions to the Red Planet were launched from three different countries in 2020, the US, China and the United Arab Emirates. You see, there was a launch window in the summer of last year where Earth and Mars were in an optimal position for spacecraft to arrive quickly, and all of them, bar the China mission, have now successfully reached their destination, with the China rover mission expected to land in May. Al-Amal, or the Hope mission, is the UAE's first attempt to reach Mars. It is an orbiter designed to study the Martian weather and atmosphere, and according to the Emirates Mars mission team, the probe will be the first true weather satellite around Mars. So what exactly does that entail? I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum. Stick with me in this video and together we will investigate the HOPE mission, what it has seen so far and what UAE scientists hope it will accomplish. The United Arab Emirates Space Agency was created in 2014 with the goal of driving interest in space science research and exploration in the Arab nation. The UAE and other Arab countries have been attempting to diversify their oil-based economies, using the money that they gain from oil to expand and invest into technology and knowledge-based economies. This is great for space exploration, as the space agency has already stated that they will share the resulting mission data internationally. Impressively, the HOPE mission is the UAE's first venture outside of Earth's orbit. They skipped the moon altogether and have gone straight for Mars, with a reasonably small budget of only $200 million. The HOPE mission was built with international support from the University of California, the Arizona State University and the University of Colorado Boulder, which is where the spacecraft was eventually assembled. The UAE also worked with India's space program, ISRO, in developing the spacecraft, as ISRO has already successfully sent a probe to Mars. After five years of planning and construction, HOPE was launched on a Japanese rocket from the Tagnegashima Space Center in Japan on the 19th of July 2020. After a seven months long cruise through space, HOPE finally performed a successful orbital entry maneuver on the 9th of February 2021. This has made the UAE the fifth country to reach Mars and the second country to successfully enter a Martian orbit on its first try after ISRO. As I mentioned, the HOPE mission will be collecting scientific data while in orbit around Mars, specifically observing Mars's climate and atmosphere. While designing the spacecraft, a consultation was made with a NASA-led Mars Exploration Program Analysis Group to look for gaps in our knowledge of the planet. As a result of this consultation, it was equipped with three scientific instruments that would help it detect water vapor and water ices in the atmosphere itself, the atmospheric temperature, and it also has capabilities to search for trace amounts of oxygen and hydrogen particles that have escaped into space. Additionally, it has a high-definition digital camera on board, which has already been used to take some fantastic images. So, why these instruments exactly? Well, one of its science goals is to investigate the absence of water on the surface of Mars. Mars cannot contain liquid water on its surface naturally due to its thin atmosphere. You know how on Earth the higher up in altitude you go, the lower the boiling point of water? This is because at higher altitudes, the atmosphere is thinner, meaning there is less air pressure exerted on the water. On top of Everest, the boiling point of water is only 70 degrees Celsius. On the surface of Mars, the atmospheric pressure is the equivalent of 30 kilometers up on Earth, meaning it's so thin there that water can evaporate very quickly. It wasn't always like that on Mars though. Previous Mars missions have returned evidence that Mars may have once had a thicker, warmer atmosphere and even oceans of liquid water early in its history compared to the cold, dry atmosphere it has today. This leads us to suspect that Mars has since lost most of its atmosphere to space and together with NASA's MAVEN spacecraft that is already in orbit around Mars, HOPE will help to understand why this is happening. To give you a bit of background information about this, our sun constantly emits very high energy photons. 
These photons, upon reaching the Martian atmosphere, smash into the atoms present, knocking their electrons off, meaning that atoms turn into ions, or particles with a negative charge. As the solar wind passes the planet, most of these ions get carried away as they are drawn to the magnetic field contained within the solar wind itself, in a process called sputtering. And even if they don't leave the atmosphere themselves, they may bump other particles out instead. Sputtering happens all the time, but the effectiveness of this process becomes weaker over time as the Sun gets older and less active. Billions of years ago, when Mars may have had a thick atmosphere, sputtering would have been happening at a rapid rate compared to today. Over the course of those billions of years, Mars is presumed to have lost more than 65% of its atmosphere. Earth also loses hundreds of tons of its atmosphere every day due to radiation and sputtering, but Earth has global processes that also replenish the atmosphere. It also has its own magnetic field, which helps prevent a lot of atmospheric loss, as most solar wind is pushed around our planet, and as a result, the atmosphere doesn't interact with the solar wind as much. On Mars, there is nothing to stop the solar wind directly interacting with the Martian atmosphere. Mars probably did have a magnetic field until about 4 billion years ago, but for some reason the dynamo in its core stopped. Mars's lower mass and density compared to Earth's might be a reason for this. Theories suggest that Earth's magnetic field is the result of a dynamo effect caused by the rotation of the core of the planet. This occurs when a liquid outer core is in constant motion around a solid inner core, the motion caused by the planet's rotation. Mars's lower mass and density probably resulted in its interior cooling a lot more rapidly than Earth's, completely solidifying Mars's core, which may be why we still have a magnetic field and Mars doesn't. Interestingly, investigating Mars's dynamo is something NASA's InSight mission is still trying to do right now, which you can learn more about here if you are interested. So how can the HOPE mission help to investigate what's going on with Mars's atmospheric loss? and what will it do compared to NASA's MAVEN spacecraft? Well, whereas MAVEN has an extremely elliptical orbit, HOPE will stay further out. This is so it can maintain a daily global view of Mars, keeping track of the Martian seasons and following weather events like Mars's famous dust storms. Maintaining a high orbit means that weather events can be tracked easily and can be compared to other regions of the planet simultaneously. It will also be able to detect particles as they leave Mars's atmosphere, and hopefully help MAVEN map atmospheric loss events better. The combination of datasets will help us get a better handle on how much atmosphere Mars actually loses to sputtering. The HOPE mission also aims to find more evidence to questions like, did Mars ever have a warm and hot atmosphere? Was there liquid water on its surface? And could it have once been a place habitable for life? You may wonder why this is relevant to you, but what we learn about Mars will also help us understand more about how Earth formed, as we'll be able to compare the processes that happened there with what we may expect to happen to our own planet. Over the course of HOPE's two-year mission, it should provide a wealth of data that will better place us in the universe and solar system we live in. So there we have it almost everything you could want to know about the UAE's HOPE mission to Mars. Thanks for watching! If you found value in this video, I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing. A big thanks to my patrons and members who support the channel too. If you would like to help support and have your name added to this list, check the links in the description. All the best and see you next time.